I've been arguing for a long time that the sports media is even more biased than the political media, which coming out of this Hunter Biden discussion that we're having, this one is even crazier to think about. So ESPN is not covering the transgender swimmer story, which happened all this week and through the weekend. A six foot four man, Will Thomas, decided to become a woman and change his name to Leah Thomas and won the 500 uh, swim competition over every other woman in college athletics. ESPN Buck just pretended this story basically didn't exist because they don't know how to cover it because it threatens the very essence of women's sports. What they did cover, they had the women's NCAA tournament on, and they decided that they were going to take a stand against the don't say gay bill, even though the bill in Florida that we talked about doesn't actually say gay in any way. This occurred on ESPN. They had a moment of protest. I want you to listen to this. This is nothing to do with the world of sports at all, Buck. This is a next level crazy move by ESPN which has gone full-on woke insanity, MSESPN. Listen to this. Legislation happening in Florida and across other states as well that are targeting our LGBTQI plus communities. Many of our colleagues here at ESPN have planned and organized a walkout that will be happening at 3 p.m. Eastern today. And to be honest with you, we thought we were going to come here today and really celebrate a sport that has meant so much and done so much, including for so many in the LGBTQIA plus communities. But we understand the gravity of this legislation and also how it is affecting so many families across this country. And because of that, our allyship is going to take a front seat. And with that, we're going to pause in solidarity. Okay, can I, I think so about much. how crazy that is. I so mean, I'm like, I can see your face as you're listening. This is ESPN. This is a sports network. That was not some, uh, you know, like uh, somebody's Instagram post. On, if you're watching the women's college basketball tournament on ESPN, that's what you suddenly heard, and then they pause programming. First of all, did she, did she say LGBTQ? I pl- yeah. What's, what's the, the I? what's the I? I? I thought you might know. I, I was. I thought you might know. Is I'm it indigenous here, it, people? Are it, they a part of the crew now? What, or what is was it, it? Is it indigenous? No, no. Intersex. I think is probably what it is. Oh, but what does intersex even mean? I don't know what that um, means. That means that was there was a previous term that would have been used for that where you have both. By the way, I could be wrong. That's a guess. So if anyone don't, no one yell at me. I'm I'm guessing what the acronym addition is. This is when is you here. have two different like body Sets. set. Like your yes. There was a previous term. Now that term, by the way, which we had all learned, which begins with an, an H, is uh, is considered. I don't even know if I knew that. Term. You're not allowed to use that term now. It's con- now it's called intersex. But that is actually for the biological reality of gender that of of what small would be a, a percentage a, chance occurs where you might be born both male well, and female. There is, there is sort of a by gender situation usually it's more one than the other but that's not what uh the transgender debate is actually about so just to be clear intersex is usually uh kept into a separate category anyway i think that's what the eye is put that but even just still i'm sitting here, I'm like espn introducing me to a a new extension of the acronym plus doesn't the plus cover the i like isn't the whole point of the lgbtq plus that as How they many add more, more letters to it, can we can we just get? say the plus i can barely keep up now you but, know but it's, imagine it's, you're sitting down because, and by the way, the funny thing about this is it was during uh, the South Carolina women's game, and I'm not making this up, Buck. They were up 44 to 4 on the Howard women's team, the one versus the 16 seed. Uh, so the moment of silence really should have been for Howard's women's basketball team. But imagine you're sitting down to watch this with your kids. And then suddenly this anchor comes on talking about the don't say gay bill this, and pauses programming. This has a like a almost like a Soviet feel where you, you're watching sports and all of a sudden they're just going to break in and give you some kind of political propaganda so messaging weird, in the middle right? of it. It's bizarre. Um, but, you know, from what you you always tell me this because you come from a, a sports world background that it's more woke than political political media. And I think about this. Who? who 
in the who in the sports media will say that it in the sports media a lot of people you know we have friends you know at uh, Fox and the and the Daily Wire and the Blaze and all over who agree with us that the trans athlete comp- competition thing is is just flatly absurd and insane and wrong another thing by the way, I like that the woman who was who didn't make it uh to the NCAA finals came out and said Leah Thomas yes. stole my spot because that is That's the right. truth Leah Thomas stole her spot this should never have happened but uh in the sports media, you would think there would be some voices. It's like, outkick, it's outkick, and that's it. So, I mean, nobody else will even cut buck. What about, about Barstool? This. They don't even they don't even get on Bar, this issue? It's a, Barstool, like, they are so afraid because of the controversy that they've gotten in the past that they try and steer clear of almost all political-related issues. So they really won't but cover this. Th- th- this is a litmus test because if you are not even a conservative, if you are a rationalist, Yes. And you cover sports, and you see this happening. I didn't know Leah. I mean, it makes sense when you see the photos. Leah Thomas is six foot four. Yeah, the, the women, the actual women, Leah Thomas is swimming against. What maybe they're five, five ten, five yeah, eight. Five, you know, ten, maybe yeah. whatever. But I mean, it's so. It is the visual manifestation of the absurdity that we are all told not only to accept, to celebrate which is always the next step. It starts with be nice, let's be inclusive. And then it's just treat everybody like, uh, you know, put, put everybody in the same category. And then it's, no, we have to elevate, and you have to bend the knee and accept this and, and, and excite, get excited about it. What's interesting here to me, Buck, is this is such an extension, right? Because initially, you could, that there was at least a tacit connection between the world of sports and politics, right? That was the fig leaf they would use. LeBron James says, I'm not going to go to the White House because Donald Trump is there to celebrate winning a championship. Oh, will Tom Brady be there or not at the White House to celebrate with his Patriot teammates? Or is he going to stay away? What did Giselle say to him? That was sort of the nexus that would allow them to cover left-wing politics. Buck, that was just a sports center anchor coming out on a, by the way, local Florida bill that really will not impact hardly anyone. It, for those who don't forgotten, it's kindergarten to third grade. They're not going to allow sex to be taught in public schools for kindergartners through third graders. There's no sports connection to it at all. One way that you know that this is, what if we just made it? I mean, if I were, and Ron DeSantis has gone on offense, as he should, about what is actually called the parental rights I believe the parental rights and education bill in Florida and people don't even realize they, the the activists were so aggressive in renaming the bill and getting the media to do their bidding. I think very few people still even know it's the parental rights and education bill. But there is a hysteria on the left, not only about the LGBTQI plus agenda <laughs> as it plays out here, but also yeah. they know that parental rights and education is a huge vulnerability for them going into the midterms. They know that this they got their clocks cleaned in virginia on the left because what what, what did uh, what did our our new governor yunkin or their new governor yunkin do he just said parents should have rights and he actually followed through on that as soon as he came into office uh clay i think that as people learn more about this they'll realize how crazy the left is but beyond that what if we just made it kindergartners what if the bill just said you know what until the first grade you can't is that a problem and then you start to say Okay, we're only talking about up until third grade, which is, you know, these are really young kids. Still really young kids. Gender identity and sexuality training in the school system for kids who are six, seven, eight years old. As as I said before, I mean, I'm pretty sure some days I woke up when I was six and I said, I'm a hippopotamus. Right. And I didn't expect anybody to, you know, take me on a special trip to the zoo. Like people, when they're little kids, are very impressionable. They don't, you know, they they have parents that need to guard them for a reason. You have kids. Yes, I, there's a reason why you don't let your six year old make all the determinations about their day to day lives. Yeah, as my wife has said for a long time. I mean, in response to all these stories, we, no parent lets their six year old pick all their meals because if we did, they would eat candy exclusively because they're six and they like the taste of candy, right? So this is just craziness, and this buck significantly has nothing at all to do with sports. And ESPN, by the way, refusing all comment on this story at all to both OutKick, to Fox News, to everybody.